Rodrigo is one of the best and most underrated players in the world right now. His journey to being a top footballer is unbelievable too, with him coming from a poor background in Brazil to then becoming an important piece in one of the best clubs in the world, Real Madrid. Now Rodrigo's time at Real Madrid hasn't been the easiest, with him having some poor moments which caused a ton of Spanish reporters to ask the club to sell the player. However, despite Rodrigo having these setbacks, he didn't let these moments define him and is continuing to become a special and important player for Real Madrid. So, so how did Rodrigo come out of nowhere and become the next big thing in football? Well, let's take a look at the rise of Rodrigo's career. Rodrigo was born on January 9, 2001 and was raised in a poor section of Osasco, an area in Sao Paulo, Brazil. Both of Rodrigo's parents were teenagers when he was born, meaning that they weren't prepared the best to raise it. Regardless, they made things work, but it took some sacrifices. For example, Rodrigo's father, Eric, was a former professional footballer who played in the lower leagues of Brazil. However, he apparently stepped away from the beautiful game to make sure Rodrigo had a father figure present in his life. Now Rodrigo had that same love for football just like his father did. He didn't have any other toys except a football and played with it everywhere throughout the house. Rodrigo was obsessed with the beautiful game and this helped him on his journey to becoming a professional footballer. He became so good with the football that Santos wanted him to join their youth setup when he was only 10 years old. Additionally when he was 11 he became the youngest player ever to sign with a sports brand. Then in 2017 Rodrigo signed his first professional contract with the Santos first team after agreeing to a five-year deal. He made his debut for Santos in late 2017, but his first real impact happened in January 2018, where Rodrigo scored his first senior goal, netting a last minute winner in a 2-1 win away against Ponte Preta. This performance gave confidence to the Santos coach at the time to put Rodrigo on the squad, and he later became the youngest player from Santos to appear in the competition. That's right, Rodrigo was breaking records and making history for Santos when the likes of the legendary Pele and Neymar Jr. played for the club. That's crazy. Anyways, 15 days after he made his debut in the competition, he scored his first goal in the tournament in a 3-1 win against Nacional at just 17, two months and six days old, becoming the youngest Brazilian to score in the competition at that time. Rodrigo continued to score goals and display his electrified technique at Santos, and big clubs around the world started to take notice, especially Barcelona and Real Madrid. Before making any decision though, Rodrigo was fully focused on helping Santos on the pitch, and he indeed was. He scored great goals for the club, like netting in a 2-0 home win against Sierra, and also scoring his first professional hat-trick in a 5-2 home win against Vitoria. Overall, in the 17-18 season, Rodrigo had a total of 9 goals and 3 assists in 43 games, which is really good for a teenager. That's when in June 2018, Real Madrid weren't prepared to allow another Brazilian prodigy to slip by to their rivals. That's when they agreed a 45 million euro transfer for Rodrigo with him set to join Los Blancos in June 2019 when he was 18 years old. Like I mentioned, Real Madrid didn't want to let go of another top Brazilian talent, like what happened to Neymar when he decided to join Barca instead of them. So now Real Madrid made sure that they got their hands on the next two Brazilian gems, one of them being Vinicius and now Rodrigo. Anyways, Rodrigo made his first team debut for Real Madrid in September 2019 against Osasuna, and within a minute of coming on, he scored his first league goal. Rodrigo was making an instant impact for Los Blancos. Then a couple of months later, Rodrigo scored his first hat-trick for Real Madrid in a 6-0 win over Galatasaray in the 1920 Champions League campaign. This made Rodrigo the second youngest player to ever score a hat-trick in the Champions League, and also being the first player born in the 21st century to do this as well. Not only is Rodrigo making history for Real Madrid, but he's also creating history in the most historic competition of them all. The Champions League. Overall, for the 1920 campaign, Rodrigo managed to get 9 goals and 3 assists in 29 games. Also, his 2 goals in 19 La Liga games played a small part in the successful La Liga campaign for Los Blancos, where they ended up beating Barcelona to win the league title. Overall, for his first season at Real Madrid, it wasn't anything too crazy, but it was a good start for someone who was still in his teenage years. Now, the 2021 season didn't go well for Rodrigo. He did have some good moments in the season, like scoring a winning goal in a 3-2 victory over Inter Milan in the Champions League, but other than that, Rodrigo didn't do much. In fact, fact, his total stats for the season ended up being only 2 goals and 8 assists in 33 games, a definite downgrade from his first season at the club. There were several Spanish reports this time that started to call Rodrigo Gareth Bale's shadow due to both having a minimal impact on Real Madrid. Difference is, Rodrigo is an upcoming youngster who wanted to prove himself at the biggest club in the world, while Gareth Bale didn't care anymore and just wanted to play golf all day. Additionally, there were a ton of people on social media talking about how the two Brazilian talents that Real Madrid signed, Vinicius Jr. and Rodrigo, were flops and Real Madrid should cut their losses and sell them. However, in hindsight, it's a good thing that Real Madrid kept these two, cause they're killing it right now. Anyways, Rodrigo's future at Real Madrid was up in the air while Zinedine Zidane was still coach. However, with Zidane departing and Ancelotti coming in, Rodrigo's game completely changed for the following season and he became more effective. Real quick before we talk about Rodrigo's transformation under Ancelotti, please remember to subscribe to the channel. I would really appreciate it and it means a lot, so thank you. Now, unlike Vinicius, Rodrigo has never been a nailed-on starter for Ancelotti's Real Madrid. However, he's been clutch when it mattered. In the last remaining games of La Liga, 
Real Madrid were in a title race to win the league, but they were down 2-0 to Sevilla. Rodrigo then came on at halftime and scored an important goal against Sevilla to inspire Real Madrid to make a comeback and win this important game 3-2. Then a couple of weeks later against Espanyol, he scored two crucial goals and a 4-0 win to ensure that Real Madrid win their 35th La Liga title. Additionally, in the Champions League quarterfinals, he came on as a substitute in the second leg against Chelsea when they were down 3-0. However, Rodrigo scored a volley to send the game into extra time, where Benzema scored the winner and allowed Real Madrid to progress to the semifinals. Then in the historic semifinal against Manchester City, Real Madrid were down 5-3 on aggregate. However, in the 89th minute, Rodrigo gave Real Madrid hope as he scored a goal to bring the game within one. Then in the 91st minute, Rodrigo completed an almost impossible comeback to level the tie and send the game into extra time. That's when Real Madrid got a penalty and Karim Benzema took it and scored. Benzema did offer Rodrigo that penalty by the way, but Rodrigo told Benzema to take it as he's the designated penalty taker and he didn't want to be selfish and go for the hat trick. Rodrigo really put the team before himself. You gotta respect that. Then Real Madrid went on to win the Champions League that season after defeating my club Liverpool 1-0. So Rodrigo's crucial goals in the knockout rounds was pretty much the reason why Real Madrid won the Champions League. Rodrigo really went from a player that Spanish reporters wanted Real Madrid to get rid of to a cult hero. Rodrigo's redemption arc is unreal. Anyways, overall, Rodrigo got 9 goals and 10 assists in 49 games. A tremendous improvement from the season prior. Let's transition to the World Cup where Rodrigo probably had the biggest setback he's ever faced. Rodrigo did didn't have the best of tournaments despite him getting an assist in the 1-0 win over Switzerland in the group stages. However, as we all know, Brazil were the favorites to win the World Cup. However, their journey got cut short in the quarterfinals where they lost to Croatia on penalties. And a big reason for this loss is because of Rodrigo, since he was the first penalty taker for Brazil and his poor penalty ended up getting saved. This definitely increased the pressure for Brazil and when Marquinhos missed later on, it was all over for them at this World Cup. And it all stemmed from Rodrigo's penalty miss. However, instead of Rodrigo letting this moment define his career, he's playing better than he has ever Ever before in the 22-23 season with him having 14 goals and 11 assists in 49 games so far. This is the first time Rodrigo has gotten double digits in both goals and assists which shows that Rodrigo is continuously improving as a player. He's also scored important goals for Real Madrid this season with him scoring a brace in a 2-0 away victory over Chelsea in the Champions League quarterfinal second leg which ensured that Real Madrid will be going to the semifinal to try and retain the trophy. As we can see though Rodrigo didn't let this poor World Cup moment define him as he is still having his best season ever in his career. In my opinion the world overlooks how talented Rodrigo is because of how good Vinicius is doing recently with Real Madrid. However, Rodrigo is still a superb player on the pitch and has already written his part in Real Madrid history. With him only being 21 years old, he will only continue to play for Real Madrid for many more years. And I wouldn't be surprised if Rodrigo becomes one of the best players in the world along with his Brazilian counterpart Vinicius Jr. After all, Rodrigo is still so young and it's already worth 80 million euros and it's only going to go up from here for him. Honestly, I just can't wait to see what the future holds for this exciting Brazilian talent. Anyways, if you enjoyed this video, Video, please remember to subscribe. I would really appreciate it. And if you want to learn about another footballer who's having a great season, Ivan Tony, you should definitely check out this video right here. You won't regret it.